In this video, we're going to be doing some related rates application problems involving squares and cubes. So in general, whenever we solve our related rates problems, we want to go through some strategies to help us solve it. One strategy is to always sketch a picture or graph an example, look at something, and see if you can come up with how the pieces of the problem are all related. Once you've done that, can you write equations for any of those pieces? So write equations that are relevant to pieces of our problem. Always identify any quantities that are given to you initially and try and interpret what kind of quantities are needed or what the question is asking you to solve. Once you've got all that down, then you can start to differentiate any of those equations with respect to time and substitute any known values to allow you to solve. And once you've solved, always try and interpret your answer and see if it makes sense to the problem. So let's do an example here. We're given a square and we know that it's growing at a rate of four meters squared per minute. So we're told that the area is growing. How fast are the sides of the square increasing at the exact moment when the sides are 14 meters each. Well, we know we have a square and we're talking about area. So a relevant equation to this problem might be the area of a square, like side squared or x squared. And in this case, I'm going to use s squared, where s represents the side length. So if I square s, I get the area of the square. We're given some quantities in this problem. We're given the rate at which the area is changing. So I'm given the derivative of area with respect to time. We're told that's four. And we're also told that we want to find um, the rate at which the side lengths are changing when the side length is 14. So we know that S is going to be 14. And let's just make sure we can understand what the question is asking. We want to find the rate at which the sides are changing or ds dt, when the side length is 14. So we're finding ds dt when s equals 14. So we know we need to derive the area formula. So to find the derivative of area, we're going to derive each term implicitly with respect to time. So the derivative of a with respect to time is da dt. The derivative of s squared with respect to time is 2s times the derivative of s with respect to time. Now we can substitute some of our quantities here. We're told dA dt is 4, so I can substitute 4 into that spot. And we want to solve for ds dt when s is 14. So I can substitute 14 into the s spot, simplify and solve for ds dt. So we're dividing both sides by 28 and simplifying and we get one sevenths. So what does that mean? Well that means that we just solved for the rate of change of the side length or how much the side length is changing at the exact moment when the length is 14. So the side length is increasing because we have a positive change and it's increasing by one seven meters per minute. So let's make sure we got the correct units. Um, our side length was in meters and our time is in minutes. So we're changing at a rate of one seventh per minute. We're increasing at a rate of one seventh meters per minute. Let's do another one with a square here. So this time we're told a square is shrinking so that the length of its diagonals are changing at a given rate. And we're asked at what rate is the area of the square changing when the diagonals are 13 meters long. So this time we're dealing with area of a square but in terms of its diagonal. So if you're not aware, there is an area formula with respect to its diagonal for a square and it's the diagonal squared divided by two or half of the diagonal squared. That is the area of a square. So I could use d as my variable there, but then that might get confusing when I'm finding the derivative. So I'm going to use x to represent the diagonal length. What information are we already given? Well, we're given 
the rate at which the diagonal is changing. So I'm given dx dt, we're told it's negative six meters per minute. We're also given the diagonal length at the exact time that we're trying to find the change in the area. So we wanna find the change in the area when the diagonal length is 13. So we know we wanna derive the area formula with respect to time. If I derive area with respect to time, I get dA dt. If I derive x squared divided by two with respect to time, I just get one x times dx dt. And now I can substitute my given information. I was told that dx dt is negative six, and I wanna find dA dt when x is 13. So if I substitute negative six for dx dt and 13 for x, then I can solve for dA dt, and we get negative 78. So what does that mean? Well, we're trying to find the rate at which the area is changing, and it's negative, so our area is shrinking at a rate of 78 meters squared per minute, exactly when the diagonal is 13 meters long. So when the diagonal is changing its length, then the rate at which the area is changing may also change. So this is exactly when the diagonal is 13 meters long. This is the rate at which our area is changing. Let's do one more example. This time we're gonna do a cube. So this time we're told that we have a cube, for example, like an ice cube and it's melting so that the length of its sides are decreasing at the given rate. Assume that the block retains its cube shape as it melts. So this is all hypothetical. At what rate is the volume of the ice cube changing when the sides are seven millimeters each? So let's interpret what we need for this problem. We're dealing with a cube and we're dealing with volume. So we're probably gonna use the volume formula of a cube, which is just the side lengths cubed or side times side times side. We're given the rate at which the side length is changing. It's decreasing at a rate of two millimeters per second. So the rate of change is negative two. And we're told we wanna to find the rate at which the volume is changing when s is seven. So we wanna find dv of dt when s is seven. So let's derive the volume formula with respect to time. The derivative of volume is dv dt. The derivative of s cubed is three s squared times ds dt. And now we can substitute our given information we were told that s is seven, so I'm gonna plug that in for s and square it. And we're told what ds dt is, it's negative two. So substitute your values, simplify and solve. And we could find that the derivative of volume with respect to time is negative 294. So what does that represent? We're talking about a volume and the rate at which the volume is changing is negative. So the volume must be decreasing and it's decreasing at a rate of 294 millimeters cubed every second. Exactly though, when the side length is seven millimeters long. So again, as the side length is changing, so is the rate at which the volume is decreasing. So there's some related rate example problems dealing with squares and cubes.